Welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Do you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems, and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid-for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So to sit back and enjoy, and if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Trading coming at you with a follow-up interview with one of my favorite stories, uh, Tamir Poleg from uh, REAX, that's the ticker symbol, it's the real brokerage, uh, R-E-A-L, as you can see from the little thing next to me here, or maybe it's on that side, I don't know. Uh, Tamir, how's it going, man? uh everything's great and thanks for having me again so uh you know interesting times in in the economy in real estate but uh i think that uh as far as real is concerned we're we're really doing great i would say so because you just broke the ten thousand mark in uh agents right that was just like what last week i think it was yeah a couple of weeks ago uh yeah ten thousand is a, a huge milestone just a handful of companies Independent companies actually have more than 10,000 agents. So we are in a very lucrative group of, uh, of companies. Uh, huge achievement. Uh, super proud of our team and our agents. Uh, but, you know, for us, that's just the beginning. I mean, we have no doubt that we're going to become tens of, of thousands of agents within a couple of years and, and then beyond that. So it's just a, a very nice milestone for us. All right. So let's, you know, I don't want to, we've already done an extensive interview as to what you, what, the, what your mission is, right? But for those that haven't tuned into us before, just a brief synopsis of what's your goal? What is your mission, Tamir, in the real estate world? Yeah, so um, we started Real as a technology-powered real estate brokerage. There are one and a half million agents in the U.S. and another 160,000 in Canada. Um, all of them have to be affiliated with a brokerage. And we thought that agents are underserved and overpaying in their current traditional brokerages. And this market is really dominated by the same same names for a very long period of time. I guess all of them, all of you know the names, uh, Remax and 321. Uh, and we just thought that there is a better way of providing brokerage services to agents. So we wanted to provide a better service at a lower cost and just create a tech platform for agents to grow their businesses on. Um, so it's been a journey that we started almost nine years ago and uh, uh, we're publicly traded, as you said, and we're the 
fastest growing real estate brokerage in the country right now. We grew revenue last year by over 200% uh, percent year over year, and we continue to grow. And actually, um, this downturn in the real estate market is probably helping us attract more agents because we are so attractive in terms of our pricing that agents are now noticing us. And when they look at alternatives uh, compared to where they are in their current brokerages, because they want to find an alternative that will help them keep more money in their pockets because they're closing fewer transactions, then they notice us. So uh, um, we finished last year as a, a number 10 in the country in terms of uh, agent count. Um, and we will continue to improve on that. So it's been an exciting journey. And at the same time, we're also now starting to focus on consumers. We think that people wake up in the morning and they don't tell themselves, hey, I want to have a real estate agent or I want to have a mortgage or I want to live in stress for a few months I, until I buy a home. People simply want to buy a home. And we think that the current home buying journey is full of friction, it's broken, it can be really improved using technology while leaving the agents in the center. And we are now building the technology to empower that. And while we're building the technology, it also means that we need to integrate brokerage services with mortgage, with title, with insurance, all of those things that um, are the building blocks of, real, of a real estate transaction, which are currently separate. So right now as, as a home buyer, you need a lender, you need a real estate agent, you need a title company, you have to uh, to purchase an insurance policy. So all of those things do not work together. So we're trying to simplify everything and bring all of this together and just eliminate all the friction. So if I'm not mistaken, the last time that we met, didn't you, weren't you in the midst or did you just do uh, an acquisition of a title company? Was it a title company? It was a mortgage company. Uh, we mortgage. acquired the title company early in 2022 and the mortgage company uh, at the end of 2022. So right now we own our brokerage, we own a title company, and we own a, a mortgage company as well. So we have the building blocks needed. <laughs> and, and I love that. So, you know, I think about the first house that I bought and everybody's talking about the demise of the real estate agent. We talked about this last time. I know that I, I probably wouldn't have been able to buy my first house without my agent, right? Because I was a nervous wreck. <clears throat> there were so many things that were happening. You know, you got to lock in the interest rate. You got to do it. It was just nerve wracking, right? And documents, I mean, your your wrist gets sore, right? From all the documents you got to sign. <laughs> so, and then as you're reading those documents, you're just getting petrified because, you know, what happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? I mean, you really get nerve. It's a nerve wracking experience I, as I reflect back, right? Now it's no problem. But back then I was scared and uh, nervous and didn't know what to expect. And having the agent was definitely something that calmed me down made me feel like um, I was buying in the right neighborhood. You know, I mean, there was just a lot of things that, that made me feel good about my first purchase. I don't see how that ever goes away, personally. And, and, and we fully agree with you. We think that agents are critical to the transaction. And as long as it's humans that are buying homes, they need to be assisted by other humans experts who understand what they go through both emotionally and can also provide them the guidance, the advice, the knowledge that they need. Um, but we also think that technology can create great experiences. So how do we couple the agents, the human component with the tech component and make it work together? Uh, that's, that's the key. And I think that this is the future of real estate. And I think it's the future of real estate too. I think it becomes more efficient, right? Uh, instead of having to, to go to all these, like you said, all these different places, working with different people, it's a, it's a pain in the neck. Um, having it all in one house, I think would be very efficient, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and I mean, it, it, it's not an easy task. Like we're taking the single lar largest asset class in the world and we're trying to simplify it and and just change something that has been working for many, many, many decades. Um, but we're starting to experiment. We are building the technology. Um, in about a week, we are launching 
an experiment on the mortgage side called uh, Real Fast 14, uh, which is an assurance to a buyer that we will close in 14 days. So imagine that you're a buyer and you're sending us all of the documents and you're saying, hey, I'm interested in buying a home. Within a day, we will be able to guarantee two things. One, the actual closing. So we would be able to tell you, hey, Tim, there's no way that we will not close on the home that you desire. So 100% certainty, because right now you don't have that certainty. Until you actually sit at the closing <laughs> table, you're not sure that you're going to own this home. So we will provide you the certainty up front. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing, we will guarantee that we are able to close within 14 days. Right now, it takes 30 days, 60 days. You're in the hands of the lender. You're waiting for the clear to close, which can arrive or can arrive five days later. And you know you already scheduled the moving and maybe the, the lender isn't ready. So it will provide you more control and the ability to actually plan your life and will remove all of the anxiety that you were referring to. So how comfortable are you? So what happens? Let me ask you. What happens if you don't? You guarantee it. Okay, great. What if you don't do it? What if it goes 15, 16, 17 days? Well, it's not going to happen, but we also <laughs> back it. <laughs> we back it with, with money. So if we fail, the buyer is going to get a few thousand dollars from us. So we actually back it with, with a financial guarantee from, from us. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we have tested it internally. We are now going to test it with a bigger group of buyers. And I think that upon that, we can then continue and build the technology to just I mean, that's a, that's a win-win for everybody, right? That's a win-win for the realtor. That's a win-win for the homeowner. That's, I mean, everybody wins. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you actually touched on a, an interesting point, the agent, because right now when agents work with lenders and agents are paid a commission at closing, they also have some sort of a question mark around, will this transaction close or not? Or will it close this month or next month? How do I plan my own? Finances finance. based on on those, yeah. So, again, it it it's just a win win for everybody. I love win wins. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love win wins, man. And that's what you got going on here. You see, I I love the fact that you are challenging the status quo. So, if you think about it, what you're doing is you're making. So, you bring the realtors. They come on, right? Let's just talk about kind of the dynamics here. They come on board. If a broker comes on board and brings all their realtors over, how does that work? They, they practically work as a team. So nothing major changes for them. They still can have their office. They have their, their own relationships. They, the broker or team leader can purchase leads and distribute them. We take away all of the overhead. So everything that has to do with the support that the broker maybe doesn't want to provide or the transaction processing, we automate their business. We can we can put it in this way. So for them, again, it's a win-win because we take away all of the tasks that they're not really enjoying doing. And we also offer them favorable economics. They earn equity in, in real, which is a publicly traded company. And they tap into a network of over 10,000 agents. And we have a lot of experts that can help them. I mean, sometimes we have teams like that that are closing $100 million in, in volume and they want to get to $200 million or $300 million. Now, when they're part of this huge network, they have others that can teach them how to get there. So it, it's, as I said, it's just value all around. Yeah, I want to, and I want, I want to zero in on that piece of, getting equity in the publicly traded company that is, you know, change, challenging status quo and making it more efficient and more pleasurable experience, at least less anxiety, right? I mean, <laughs> how that can attract somebody. So now you're taking all the back end stuff. So maybe they're not good at doing all the back end stuff, but they're really good at selling homes, right? So it, that gives them the ability to be out doing what they do best which is selling homes right exactly yeah yeah they should focus on the relationships and on selling real estate everything else we take care of <laughs> and that's I, that, again a big win-win i just i 
I love what you're doing, man. I mean, I really love what you're doing. I love the story. Does the wall this does Wall Street love what you're doing? I don't think Wall Street really gets it right now. But then again, you know, the whole the whole market is in it's been especially for small and uh, you know, small micro cap, even mid cap companies. I mean, it's it's a tough market. And 90% of stocks are going to follow what the market's doing, right? So yeah. it isn't company specific, not, not at this time. For a lot of companies, it's not company specific, it's market. So unless this is the end of the world, which I, I don't think it is, I think that if you know where to look, there's going to be a tremendous amount of wealth to be made in the next 12 to 24 months. That's my hundred percent, a hundred percent agree. And I, I agree with you that Wall Street maybe doesn't fully understand our story yet, but you know, we are categorized as a real estate company and also as a fast growth tech company and investors do not like real estate at this point and not fast growth tech. <laughs> uh, but at the end, the end of the day, look at the company, the company grew revenue by over 200% last year. We're cash flow positive. We have over $20 million in the bank, and that's only increasing. So we don't need any financing. We're not dependent on anybody. Okay, sure. hold on a second. I want to take a time out. Time out. No financing needed. I just want to highlight that because right now in these times, if you need financing, that's what everybody's scared of, right? Every, sure. if there's even a hint or a whisper of the fact that you may need to raise capital. They're not coming anywhere near your stock. Right, because yeah. they're gonna they're they are so fearful of toxic dilution that they're not gonna they're not even gonna look at it. So I want to make it very, very, very clear there is no need to raise capital at the right. real and, brokers. And 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 even more than that, um, we communicated to the market that we intend to be adjusted to be up profitable in the second half of the year. So we're talking about you know weeks from now, if not earlier. Um, so as I'm thinking about a downside, where's the downside? Like well-capitalized, fast growing, becoming a leading company in the space, not needing any financing, soon to be profitable. <laughs> All right. Well, wait a minute though. We're going into a recession, Tamir. You know that, right? I mean, everybody knows that. I mean, everybody <laughs> knows that. My paper boy yeah. knows it. The, the 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 taxi driver knows it. The Uber driver knows it. Everybody knows we're going into a recession. So if we go into a recession, Tamir, what, what do you think is going to happen? So first of all, I don't know if we should be afraid of the word recession, but let me, give, let me tell you something. Real estate actually went into recession in the fourth and third quarter of last year. So transaction volume actually dropped by around 30, 35% at the end of last year. If you don't call that a recession, then what's a recession? <laughs> but at the same time, if we look at the, the fourth quarter, for example, we grew revenue by over 90% when the market was in recession. So I think that it's just an opportunity for us. And it doesn't mean that a slowdown or a recession hits all companies. Some companies actually benefit when the market downturns or when they're the, what, a, the what a unique tougher. way of looking at things. Sometimes yeah. a recession or a downturn could be like a cleanse. An opportunity. Right? It's an opportunity. We are growing market share right now. <laughs> we are killing the competition. Like right. more agents are joining us. We are increasing our transaction volume. We are gaining market share. And if you wake up in a year from now or two years from now, you will realize that real is now a top five brokerage, all of a sudden, a year ago, nobody knew who we were. So for us, those are really, really favorable market conditions. Those are fantastic market conditions. That My belief is this, when everyone knows that we're going into a recession, the odds are, when everybody's on the same page, typically uh, the market will do the opposite of what everybody thinks they know. We have been in a downturn in the small cap I would say there's been a recession in the small cap market for the last 12 months easily, right? Yeah. There's been pressure on companies for the last 24. If I look at companies and I take it in and I see that we went through a pandemic, which I'm pretty sure we've never had before, 
uh, only one. That was the first ever in history. And then we went through the supply chain issue that was the worst we've ever seen. And then we went through an interest rate hike cycle, the fastest that it's ever been in history. Yeah. And small cap and micro cap valuations are the cheapest they've ever been in history. There's a lot of history there. History is a long time, I think. And I think it's been overdone to the downside. And I think that when the animal spirits that we Americans possess, I think we're being underestimated. I know there's talk of a rising China global superpower and the, this is the fall of Rome. And I'm not buying that for one second. <laughs> Because I see what's happening out there, not just in your company, but other companies as well that are doing things that are phenomenal, that are going to make us more efficient. They're going to make us smarter. They're going to keep us safer. These things are happening. Uh, we're being underestimated. And when people get out of this funk of looking at all the negative shit that's out there and start looking at some of the positive things that are going on around us and there's a lot of them and the opportunities that are around us tons of them right i think things are going to be fun i think we're going to make <laughs> we're going to create so much wealth in the next 12 to 24 months it's going to be scary but that's if you know where to look and you're not a doom and gloomer right I, I i fully agree and this is the greatest country in the world and this is the greatest economy in the world and and I think that, you know, from my perspective, if you look at the American people, people are doing well. People have jobs. People are buying. People are spending. People have homes. 66% of, of Americans own homes. Um, so I think that the average American also doesn't care about China or Europe. You know, we, we care about our own country. Uh, so at the end of the day, the media needs to create headlines. And this is this is, you know how they make money, but I'm super optimistic and bullish on, on the American economy and on the American real estate in general. I mean, there's only so much of it, right? And I mean, we talked, I was telling you before we, we started recording, I mean, when we got, we were averaging 16, when everything was hopping and, and doing well in the economy and the stock market was hitting all new highs, we had on average 1,600 homes uh, for sale. And then we did get the big spike up to 8,000 homes. And it happened quick. Yep. And we were it looked like we were going to 10,000. And that would have been a little high. We're down, back down to 4,000 homes. So somebody's buying homes. <laughs> the interest rate isn't, you know, I ref my parents bought their first home at 13% interest. That was years ago, a long yeah. time ago, but 13%. That's that's a pretty steep <laughs> interest rate, right? Are we anywhere close to that right now? Where are we at right now? We're at around six and a half, six point four, six point five. So still historically speaking, yes, those are still reasonably low interest rates. But I think that what's happening, what has been happening in the past six, nine months is that people psychologically are getting adjusted to this new reality. People used to live in a two and a half, three percent uh, rate, interest rate environment. And then now people are starting to understand, okay, I'll, I'll put it differently. I think that people's desire to own homes will win over people's desire to wait for 3% interest rates to come back because it's not coming back anytime soon and people do need homes. Uh, so I, I think that, you know, as days go, go by, people are just getting used to this new, uh, new reality. And it's not that bad. Like, I, I think that what's happening right now in, in real estate, the problem is actually on the supply side, not on the demand side. Demand is there. We have a problem with supply, we have a problem with the fact that there is a shortage of one and 1.5 million homes to reach a, a healthy balance in the market. We have a problem that builders' confidence is extremely low, so they're not building any new homes. 
And we have a problem that 72% of homeowners are sitting on 4% or less interest rates. So they have no incentive to sell. And that creates, again, an imbalance between supply and demand. Demand is there. There's not enough supply. Prices will not come down. The only thing that might come down is actually interest rates. And once it does, then we will just see a, a crazy boom of real estate transactions. And the real brokerage should be positioned extremely well when that occurs. Oh, I mean, yes, we, we are there. And we continue to thrive even even though the market conditions are not great, but we thrive, we grow. This 2023 is going to be a, an amazing growth year for us. Um, and yes, when the market changes or picks up, we, we will do even better. <laughs> uh, so listen, I think, um, you know, there's there are companies that right now you look at, and to me, you know, you know I told you before, I'm a tech, I wasn't a tech guy. I was always a fundamental guy. But then I took a tech chart course and now it's the first thing I look at, right? Your your stock to me is kind of in a holding pattern, is what I would say. It's um you've tested an area here. I think it was the $1 mark. Round numbers have a big psychological effect on people, right? So holding that dollar is important for a lot of reasons. NASDAQ compliance, all that. But to me, it looks like you're just in this holding pattern and you're kind of, you've tested the bottom a couple of times. You got what's called the double bottom test, <laughs> right? Where you just kiss the dollar just almost to the penny and it helped. If you just continue to move sideways, then I could I call that the building of a launching platform. The wider the launching platform, the higher the space. Right. <laughs> so I don't look at going sideways as a bad thing. I look at that as a good thing. So you have to ask yourself, how high has this been? It's been up to what? Four, and, four bucks is the highest it's been. Yeah. yeah. So your downside is a dollar, what, dollar 30 if you go to zero. <laughs> but you don't need financing. You've got money in the bank. You're growing. So I don't think going to zero is an option. So if they're not going to zero, is there the possibility that you could go back to four, though? What's the risk reward? Three to one? That's pretty good odds. I mean, I live in Vegas, and three to one odds would be pretty damn good, man. <laughs> right? So. Yeah. I'm not telling anybody to buy the stock. That's not what I do. All I do is present the story and try to make it so that people understand the leadership and understand the vision, the strategy. And then the real simple question is, are they executing? Is he do what he says he's going to do? And I think you have a pretty good track record there as well, Tamir, right? Yeah, we, we have a great track record of, of actually ex exceeding uh, investors' expectations. So if you look at all past, I don't know, six, seven, eight quarters, we've been we've been doing much better than anyone anticipated. And uh, and I think that we will continue. Uh, but, you know, you're looking at a company that did <clears throat> $380 million in revenue last year, and we're trading at $220 million. Uh, so it, it really doesn't make sense, especially when you think about this year, that's going to be a... a a tremendous growth here for us. And if you're thinking about the next 12 months, then I believe we are super uh, undervalued, but you know, the market is, is behaving like the market behaves. And, uh, and I believe that it'll change. So you got a mortgage company, a title company. I mean, would you say you're stronger today than you were 12 months ago? Oh, a hundred percent across the board, <laughs> like in terms of, the number of agents, number of transactions, the systems that we have in place, the, the businesses that we have under the umbrella, the cash position, um, the, the cash flow positive angle, the the very the proximity to becoming profitable. Yes, I mean, 100%. When you bring in some marquee names, I mean, like everybody, every industry has got their superstars, right? Yep. When you bring in a marquee name or a, a superstar, what does that do for the business? 
it just, I mean, it makes it stronger because people want to be in the proximity of successful people. And when we bring a head turner, then agents who want to become successful want to join that community and be close to that person because they can have access to the, their knowledge and their expertise and, and, and advice. So, I mean, the more this network grows, it becomes more powerful and the ability to attract becomes easier. Didn't you have some organizational changes not too long ago? Um, yeah. Can you, can you, can you emphasize what that was real quick? I think it'll be a good way to wrap this up. Yeah, I think we have a, about a minute left. So uh, yeah, a couple of months ago, we announced that we are actually increasing uh, a few of our fees, um, which you know will help us get to profitability and just make the, the business model much more sustainable. The reason why we did that is probably two things. One, the model that we were operating in, according to the, the business model, was designed when we had a couple of hundreds of agents. So we needed to make a lot of assumptions as to how the agents or how the business will look like in the future, how the operating expenses are going to look like, how many agents are going to join, how many agents are going to reach a certain kind of production. So we needed to make assumptions. But when we are at 10,000 agents and closing last year, th over 37,000 transactions, we actually have data. So we didn't need to make assumptions. And at that point, we could go and refine the model and say, okay, we needed to increase this fee. We need to, to add another fee here um, and just make it much, much more robust. Uh, and then like all other companies, because of inflation, the cost of labor increased. Uh, so the cost of running a business, our business increased. So we needed to make changes uh, also because of that, but it has been a collaborative effort with our agents um, and we involved them in, in the thinking process and we came to, um, to a very good solution that was also acceptable by our agents. So we didn't see any churn, we didn't see any pushback. They, they actually really like the fact that we're doing this also because our agents are shareholders in the company. So they think as clients, but also as shareholders. So that's, again, a win-win. Right. So one thing I want to emphasize, I mean, this is great. This is for investors, right? I, that's my portion of it. But I, if I'm a real estate agent that's watching this, I might be thinking about giving you guys a call and seeing if maybe we can do something, right? I mean, yeah. I think this is for everybody. Um, Tamir, I love what you're doing, man. I thank you so much for giving us the time. And uh, maybe in, I think we had too much time between. Next time, let's... Let's sure, you know, let's let's do one sooner, right? I love, I that. love talking, I love that. man. I mean, you're like having a positive cup of coffee in the morning. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that, and thank you for having me again, Tim. All right, Tamir, hold on once again. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording here. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch today. Uh, today we had Tamir Poleg from the Real Brokerage ticker symbol R E A. X. I hope you found today's interview informational and educational. And if you enjoyed today's interview, please do us a favor. Give us a like. And how about giving us a share? While you're at it, why not give us a follow? Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Trading wishes you the very best of success.